Well, uh, I was asked to talk about the sustainability, uh, sorry, the innovation now uh, and towards leading towards the, uh, the entrepreneurship. So I always love to talk about the innovation together with uh, the sustainability. So that's why I have add, added a little uh, feature there to the topic. Innovation, sustainability, and the entrepreneurship. Well, uh, to talk about uh, this topic, uh, <clears throat> I have put a small video to my first slide. I don't know how many of you will be able to recognize this. It's a, it's a small uh, macro uh, video of a coral. Uh, you can see uh, the tiny moving creatures, uh, they are they're called polyps. So they are the people who are basically eating, or in, in your layman, uh, the, uh, the language, if I say, they're eating from the, uh, the seawater and um, basically making these uh, beautiful corals that they will give the, the color, uh, well, the, uh, uh, the spread, and also this, uh, this, they will scale up, and they will give the, the pattern to the, uh, the, the, uh, the coral. So if you ask about the, the best inventor or other innovator, there's a different, two different uh, terminologies, invention, innovation, and inven innovators and uh, inventors. There are basically two different terminologies, even though we have messed up uh, as a country. That's a different story. But uh, uh, if you ask what is the best, uh, who are the best uh, inventors or the innovators in the world, I could say they're polyps. So they get the, the, the stuff from the nature, and when you have, the, uh, have that particular good environment for them, they will, they will just uh, do their job. But if you change that particular environment, slight change to their natural setup in few seconds, they will all die. So that is the nature of any inventor, any innovator. That's, that's common everywhere in the world and in Sri Lanka as well. There are beautiful, uh, very, very, very creative inventors and innovators in the country. Matter of a second, they will be thrown to the trash. That has happened to many people in the country. So that's why I put this particular uh, small video to show you how sensitive the inventors and innovators are. They are almost like the polyps in the coral. And uh, to give a small glamour uh, to my topic, I have, uh, I, I'm trying to do a small comparison. Mm, I always love to challenge the people much bigger than me, much stronger than me. That's my, that's my you know, uh, sort of a passion. I never fight with a person who is below me. Even I fail, I know I fought with someone you know, at a higher level. So like that, I have uh, picked uh, two countries to do a small comparison about uh, uh, the invention and why we are really here. And I have picked two strong countries. One is China, the other one is India. We'll go with the, the figures. I'm very sure you'll be able to see uh, the screen and you will be able to see the numbers. You, uh, we'll start with the, uh, the land area. You can see India ranked number one. India is three times China. You take the size of Sri Lanka, India is about 150 times of Sri Lanka. You, ca you can't think of even comparing size. Go to the population, the world population just past the 8 billion, and you can see the India and China almost 1.5 billion each, and they rank number one. Uh, and the Sri Lankan population is only 22 million, and the Indian population is about 46, sorry, 64 times of the Sri Lankan population. The next one is about the patent application. I'm moving to the, the invention or rather the innovation area. Uh, well, one can say the patent application, number of patent application, you just take the, the numbers, the China is always number one. But if you take, the, uh, take that as a percentage of the population, you can see, once again, China ranks number one. China value is 37 times the Indian value. And you take the, the Sri Lankan figure, it's almost 52 times. So you can see we are almost closed together in India and Sri Lanka. Then the, the next column, that's about the, the patent granted. The first one is patent applications. The next one is patent granted. Once again, China ranks number one. Again, I'm, I'm referring the, uh, the, per, uh, the, the percentage of the population value. And uh, you can see the Indian value, it's almost uh, 90 times. And the Sri Lankan, 100 times. 
And once again, you can see India and Sri Lanka, we are almost close, even though the population is that much big and the size is that much big. Then the last column, it's about the GDP. That is where we were always talking about. The GDP, once again, China ranks number one. The Indian one is basically, the China one is three times India, Sri Lankan 30 times. So you can see what really has happened to Sri Lanka, even though we talked about the policy, we talked about many aspects, we get the, the international sense to Sri Lanka, but what matters is the creativity. That, I'm not really going to say that uh, the, the creativity is not really with us, but unfortunately, even though we are living in a blessed country, it's not the best country for all of us. And that was created by not the, the so-called FWLS people, the 225 and the, the so-called followers, it's by you people, the scientists, because you are not really geared into the, the real sense which the country can be developed. Well, from that, what really has happened to us? And are we really creative? Are we, can't we, can't we move forward from this or rather we are, are we going, really going down? Is it, I mean, the only option is for us to leave the country and find a better, poly, better uh, place in another country. So that is the question I'm very sure with, uh, which you have in your mind. But uh, before talking about that, let me show you an interesting image, which I'm very sure you have not even seen this image. This was a very recent uh, finding by the Department of Archaeology. What uh, you can see your right hand, uh, sorry, the left hand side, that is the oldest burned clay tile which was found in Sri Lanka, and that is more than 3,000 years old. That is, uh, that goes to the photo, uh, uh, the pre, uh, the pre prehistory of Sri Lanka. It's not, it's, it's going beyond the uh, Anuradhapur era, and uh, that tile, <coughs> you just compare uh, the the history, you know, the, the Lord Buddha. Uh, that was 2,500, 2,600, and this is far beyond that. And the people who lived in this country, they have used burned clay tiles 3,000 years ago. Burned clay tile, handmade, it's not a, the molded uh, 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 tile. And you can see a grew, it's not, it, it was not something made uh, recently that was there before. And definitely, they had a beautiful structure, and they tied this particular tile to the roof structure. There are a lot you can think from this slide, this tile, but I'm taking you to the, the other, uh, the two images. You can see my two fingers there, the bottom image. And that's a tile, again, more than 2,000 years old tile. It's not a simple tile. You can see it's with two different materials. One is the clay, the other one is glazed, right? This is coming from Anuradhapura, and it's, a molded tile, it was, it was made with a mold, and it's a burnt clay tile. Two materials, two different thermal coefficient of thermal expansions, and there's a burnt clay tile. So just imagine two diff uh, materials with two different uh, coefficient of thermal expansion putting together and burning to a temperature of 800 degrees, what is going to happen? Definitely this should split, right? You will not be able to see the glazed layer. And it's not a thin layer, it's a thick layer. It, you, you, can, you can imagine the size of uh, the, the thickness of the glass with my two fingers. That's my, that's my finger, really. So it's about one to two millimeter thick. One to two millimeter thick glazed layer with the different coefficient of thermal expansion firing to a temperature about 800 degrees. I could say, wow. So that particular technology is not available in the world at the moment. So this was a very recent finding, and we are trying to find, or rather decode the, the history, that's a different story, but I just want to uh, spell you, if you really want to think of developing this beautiful, blessed country, everything is inside. Only thing is we need to have the attention and the attitudes in the correct pitch. Well. That is uh, the slide uh, the, about the, the tile, and you, you take about the construction, I mean, you take any, any construction from the history, not about the recent past. The history, they have taken the, uh, the maximum of the, the natural or the near naturality. 
you go to the Damulla, they got the natural light, they got the, the natural shading, they got the beauty of the, uh, the natural or near natural painting, get the, got the, uh, the, the, the best out of it with all the natural materials. They always got the, the natural contours. They always get, try to get the, the natural material. So all these structures are lasting more than 1,000, 2,000 years, but many of them are either natural or near natural. From the construction to the, the food and agriculture, one can say the Anuradhapura Puranaru area, there can be about 100, 200 odd people. They went to the jungle, they picked something and they ate and they, they survived. Well, I'm not going to believe that. All these structures which I showed you in the previous slide are made by thousands of thousands of people. Maybe millions of people live there, but they knew one particular fact which you and I don't want to believe. That is, they knew that they're going to die one day. Our people, at the ICU bed, at the last second, at the last second, last moment, they are thinking of another additional second. I'm not going to say that is bad, that is good. But at the same time, we have to understand, we are a temporary creature. We are a set of temporary creatures in this particular world. So we should do the minimum harm to the nature and keep it for the next generation. So they knew that. And they got the maximum out of what they had. So the productivity was much higher than, I'm very sure much higher than what we are talking today. I can't remember the, uh, the first presenter. He was talking about uh, the paddy, uh, uh, the coconut, and rubber. But well, I mean, you go to the history, I'm very sure those values are much beyond what you and, Kai, you and I talked today. From the food and agriculture, the medicine, I have picked uh, three interesting topics. The medicine, I mean, I'm, I'm not really going to talk about uh, the, the medicine uh, which came from uh, in India, that is uh, with King Vijaya, that uh, Ayurvedic medicine, but we had our own uh, medical setup. Uh, let me take you one uh, small example from the, the history. There's one called uh, Rasa Vedakama. We all know about uh, the Rasa Diya, the mercury. So what they did was they got the mercury to a, a, the stone cup, a galkova, and they put the, the stone tick. They were working on the material working on the, uh, the rasadiya, the, the mercury, and they converted rasadiya, the mercury, to a useful drug carrier. The mercury is a heavy metal, and we, we normally don't let our kids to touch, but our ancient people, they converted, even today, that is existing. You go and talk to a, a, a very, very old uh, Singhala Vedamata, they will tell you the rasa Vedakama still exists. So this mercury, the heavy metal, they converted that to a Drug carrier, how? You talked about nanotechnology today. The Nidhitakshane, the nanotechnology. If you really think about the, the real co fathers or the far, I mean, a, a few more generations, they're from this blessed country. Every time these two, two pieces touched each other, the mercury was broken into another level. They never knew about the nanotechnology, they never knew about the, the nanoparticle size, but they knew by changing the material, the, the, the particle size, they can change the properties of the material. Wow. I could say, really, wow. I mean, we have never thought about these facts. So from the, the construction to the agriculture to the medicine, I mean, I'll be able to talk about millions and millions of examples to show that we have enough and enough things to be proud, that is, not to talk about the Ravana era, but really existing technology which you and I ever thought of decoding. Well. Three beautiful houses for me. Number one, the top, it's a poor, 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 very poor house. The middle one, I could say a poor house. The bottom one, state of the art, have used uh, all the sophisticated technologies. Well, a beautiful house with all the green material, uh, maybe, you know, uh, all, all, all smart sensors will be there inside, and you have some greenery. Well, a smart building. Another, this Main Street, when we were really, really poor as a country, before the, uh, the independence. The bottom one, the Main Street today. And out of which, this is the Hong Kong city. We believe as the, the world citizens, the, 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 the modern or the, the state of the art, the city in the world. And we say they are all sustainable. And we all say these are the green structures. When you talked about the green, when you talked about the innovation, when you talked about the sustainability, these are the two images we always love to pick. We always forget these two structures. 
you create a sophisticated need, and you try to solve the sophisticated need with the sophisticated science, and you say, wow, I mean, you have optimized all the, the technologies. Wow, right, we are, we are good scientists. And we are there, we are sustainable, we are green. But really, to me, even though these two people, or the people who lived in these two houses, they, they won't feel what I'm telling, but to me, they are the real sustainable people. They are the real inventors in the world who are with the real sustainability concepts. Sustainability is not to go to the, care, uh, the, the jungle and have some leaves around and you know, uh, live in a, live in a stone, uh, uh, stone cave. It is, it, is, it, is, it is telling you to have your satisfaction to the maximum, but don't compromise the ability of the next generation to achieve their satisfaction. You create structures, you create the material which lasts 500 to 600, 700 years, and you create structures, you create stuff that will be there for many generations. And you call them as sustainable and you call them as green. But unfortunately, to tell you, we have compromised, or rather we have killed the creativity of the generations, or not really generations, maybe generations. So we have to think. We have to think. I mean, I'm, I'm putting this for you to think. Well, this is what we have created. I mean, this is where we need to bring the, the innovation and inventions. Well, these are nothing new. Let me show you uh, one interesting image from uh, China. So this was before the lockdown. You know, I, I'm very sure few of you can remember there was something called COVID in, in the world. So that was in 2019. So before the COVID, this image was taken. And this, the same location, after 14 days of lockdown in China, the same place. You can see what the people, you and I, have done to the world within many years, and how the nature has recovered within 14 days. I told, I, mean, I, I was telling, you will not be able to, many of, some of you may not be able to remember this COVID era. But this is not that far. So this was in last December, you know, what was happened to Colombo. So the top image is uh, the typical Colombo, and the one below is with the, uh, the immigrant who came from India without visa. So, so that is, you can see the difference and you can see what exactly has happened to the world and what we have done to the world. This is what we were expecting uh, to do with the artificial intelligence and the modern sophisticated science, walk this way, but this is what exactly we have done. Every step we put forward, we have basically destroyed the nature. Unless we turn, nobody knows where we are going to stop. Where we went wrong. I love to, uh, I thought like, you know, bringing my childhood here and to compare the childhood of many of the very junior scientists at the back and the kids of your own senior scientists. I still can remember when I was uh, a kid, this was exactly me. I was playing until my mother comes and at around 5.36, she pulled me up uh, to home and saying, okay, it's time for you to study with the school uniform. But today, your kids, the mother should pull them out to at least see the, the sun to the nature, so that is what has happened to the next or the new generation, the, the, uh, the generation today. So I, I'm not going to say this is bad, but the only thing is, as scientists, we have to understand what was before and what is today, and we have to adapt and serve the need of the, the future generation and the present generation. This is again an interesting cartoon. When I was a kid, I still can remember the day I flew my first kite. It was, a, it was like uh, uh, doing six, four, six, seven PhDs. So you have to get the correct material. Finding the material is itself is a, is a problem, and you have to tie them together. You get the, the correct paper, you put them together, and you, keep the, you balance it in your finger and see how it is going to be. All perfect, put the tail as well, and you put your junior, uh, junior guy on the other side, you pull, what is going to happen? Will it go up? In Singhala, we say, Kuriya Gahana. So that is the first experience. 
10 times, 20 times, and That was a marvelous experience. I don't know how many of you can have that particular experience. That was a marvelous experience. But today, you have a ready-made kite that is called drawn. You have two sticks in your hand. You can put them up. And other than the, the experience you got with the kite now, you can get the bird eye view. You can see the down, right? And it, it's an amazing experience for the next generation and the, the generation today. But unfortunately, they missed the most valuable the experience in their life that is by that is to learn with the failures because they have a product which is 100 percent you know quality product which will fly if it is not flying throw that out get a new one that is they are with each and every product each and every toy which you are giving for your kid today so that is what is going to happen to the world, to the generation today, and to the future generation. So that is something we have to seriously think. Interesting cartoon, again, from the internet. So it's our generation talking to the sun. And it says, it's not a day like today. Today is a little comfortable day uh, for any of us. So he, he goes to the sun and talks, please go to your settings. Reduce the bright, uh, the, you go to the display, reduce the brightness, it, it's really hot for me to stay. Then the sun replies and say, I'm sorry, I haven't done any changes to my settings. You go to your settings, increase the number of trees, reduce these concrete jungles, and so and so, a lot of uh, uh, you know, points for us to think. But the last point is very much interesting. Sun says, you are not the human anymore. You go to your human mode from your toe mode. You take your phone, you have a silent mode, you have the airplane mode, like that, you know, there are a lot of modes. Now, it is time for you to rethink <laughs> from your toe mode. We talked about all the sophisticated science that is to make you automated. Your, your, that is to force you to go to the auto mode from the human mode. It's time for us to rethink and see where we are and to decide which direction we had to move. Okay. If it is a, key, uh, a keynote, I should talk about myself as a little bit about myself. This is me. Don't, don't ever think you know, I'm, I'm a person who allows to, allowed to have a bath all the time. No, that's not, that's not the real meaning. I, I'm a person who uh, solutions, uh, 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 near natural or near natural solutions for an for a existing problem so that is what I was trying to do and that may be the reason for me to be here today as well so when everybody was busy with the, the technology I, I, I'm always allowed to be with the nation so that's my passion so that's what I was doing if I just deliberate what I'm doing it's like this uh, excuse me I'm, don't take me as a uh, uh, tabla player I'm not good at uh, music but I mean this is exactly what I'm doing I'm getting the uh, the sense from the nature and give my inputs and trying to get some creative stuff out of it. That is what I'm doing. That is what I was doing in the past and this is exactly what I'm doing as well. Let me start with my uh, first patent, uh, uh, starting with the, the inspiration I really got uh, from the nature. So I'm, I'm always uh, uh, imitating the nature. That's my passion. So uh, this uh, Vesper B, the Rankubala, uh, well, that was the inspiration which I got uh, to make my first patent. So the Vesper bee, he get the clay, mix with saliva, it's a very rich, uh, uh, water-rich uh, 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 material, and he built the, uh, the wall for, the, for his next generation, not for generations. If you really want to know about the sustainability, Vesper bee is there for you to learn. It is not, not for generations. It's for a single generation. When you put the, uh, the egg, when the, uh, the kids or the, the, uh, the, the, the next generation leaves the home, that goes back to the, the nation. And the next generation will get the opportunity to build the, the house for the, the next generation at the same place. That is sustainability. And if you ask about the, the best comfortable the structures, I never will say Galadari is the best place 
but these houses. I mean, I don't know how many of you have that particular feeling. So these houses will give the, the best comfort in the world. So all these things finally ended up creating my first patent and a uh, few more patents. And all these patents are not really inventions. They are into innovations. The difference between invention and innovation, anything new, anything novel, and if you have a patent, we can say it's, in, it's an invention. So Arapi Singhalin can loveth neti, lovi gaheth neti kiel. If you can create something like that, it's an invention. But many of the inventions happening in the, in the country, unfortunately, they are not moving to the innovation level. So that's why some of the people who are, who are staying with the university system, they, they, they are very creative, but unfortunately they found those are not really working in the university setup. That's why I can see some of the faces who left the university system and join with the industry, knowing we have to, we, I mean, we, we have to convert these inventions to innovation level. So these are uh, not really inventions, they are innovations really, and it's, it's in the market as well. And the, the sense or the, the strength behind these inventions is not really me, it's not really me who invented, it's a team. And always when you are, when you are trying to uh, convert these invention to innovations, what matters is your team. Always don't try to link with a person who has the same same taste, same same uh, same knowledge, same experience. Civil engineers, uh, I I normally don't like to uh, work with uh, civil engineering students. My my research team is always with other disciplines. That's a big big how at the university, but I don't mind. I mean that's that's my passion. So one plus one is always two in mathematics, but with human, it can be millions if you get the correct team right. But if you get the wrong person, it can be negative as well. All these, this, uh, all these inventions are basically came out of, or uh, rather inventions were converted to innovations because of the people who work with me. It's a team, it's not me, it's we. Let me show you another uh, interesting, uh, one another interesting uh, inventions about timber. Well, I have put uh, three uh, interesting structures about the history, uh, starting from King Parakramba, you know, it's a seven-story uh, palace. Uh, all the slabs were created with timber, but unfortunately, you can't see them. But you go to Mbeke Devale. I mean, we all talked about the, the timber, the, the beauty of the, the, the timber carvings using Mbeke Devale as an example. Saman Devale, I don't know how many of you are aware of this particular Saman Devale history. It's, it's more than 700 years uh, uh, old uh, structure. And, uh, well, why I put this particular uh, three images and another image uh, to your... Uh, your left hand side well uh, in 2016 uh, i was uh, i was going for a project uh, official visit and i saw the the saman devale roof was uh, fallen down for a renovation i'm not a person who always you know um, i don't have a very close link with these devales but i when i saw that i, I wanted to see the, the structure so i went there and i saw the entire roof was uh, fallen down and i went and talked to the uh, the head boss and had the, the but the, the, the team leader there, and I said, Basun, can I get a small piece of this particular timber? He got a chainsaw, cut a piece, it was like this, given to me, I was asked for a piece of this, and he was given this, and you can see the two pieces, I mean, I, I, I cut that into two, so now I have a big piece of the atelier, the, the wall plate, right? I'm traveling, I'm, I'm, uh, it's on my uh, two hands now. I couldn't imagine what's really happening. So I, I took the, uh, the t sample, went to the vehicle, and it's on my lap now. I don't know what to do with this. I, I had that particular interest of having the, the own that particular timber piece, but it's a big piece now. So uh, on my way, I, uh, I got a call. Uh, I got a call uh, to one uh, good friend of mine, you may know, uh, Raj Somadev, Professor Raj Somadev. He's a, uh, I never knew that it was more than 700 years lying on my lap. So I gave a call. And he said, Rangayu Machang, this is, this is more than 700 years old. Wow, amazing. So the, the piece on my lap is more than 700 years old now. The timber you and I work today, 10, 15, or maximum 20 years, with all the sophisticated timber treatment techniques, they will decay. Termite attacks, the mold growth will be there. But this particular piece of timber has lasted more than 700 years. Nobody knows how that was happened. So that inspired me to start this particular research. So we started working with uh, Tampita Viharias, Devale. So we got the samples, we have started analyzing. And the matter, the, the real, the beauty is the team. You can see the starting from Raj, 
So he's an archaeologist. He's not a science, uh, uh, the taste person, but he's, he has a different taste on uh, archaeology. So, uh, and uh, Slintek uh, joined with me, and uh, Randika from uh, technology faculty, Jawardhanapura. And I, I'm not a timber expert. I, I, my, my, I know how, how you use the timber for structural application, but I, I never knew about the, the timber technology. So I uh, talked to Hiran from Jawardhanapura. He joined. And the most interesting story of this whole invention is this, the selection of the student. So this particular student is not a science graduate. She's a designer. She's an integrated design student from University of Morotua. So I handpicked, again, the entire university questioned me on why, select, why I selected this particular student. The reason behind this particular selection was she was the best student for this timber design, furniture design. So she knew in and out of timber what really needs to um, uh, create a good uh, timber for a furniture design. So I picked her. And we were working on all these materials with all the sophisticated uh, experiments, field experiments, lab experiments. And finally, 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 we managed to decode the, the ancient history with three leaf extracts, nano-level timber treatment techniques. This has gone to the international patenting as well. So once again, you can see how we can be a successful inventor starting from the, the history by getting the, the correct team on board. I started with uh, the coral. This 2014 uh, Okinawa beach, they found the entire coral reef was gone, and they decided to replant the corals. So by 2022, this is 2023, the entire beach is fully covered with corals. If you do the right thing with the right team, with the right attitudes, at the right time, the entrepreneurship is nothing big. It will be automatic. We talked about the invention, innovation, and the entrepreneurship. We always get the technical sense of it. This is not my parents. This is not my grandparents. In 2015, I, I, was, I was lucky to build a home for this family. They don't have anyone other than these two. The entire family was destroyed uh, by the war. And this is from Kirinochi. I managed to build a house for them with my inventions in 2015. It's not a fake smile, right? I mean, you have seen smiles in different forms, but it's not a fake smile. I'm very sure this smile have brought me up to this level. Thank you very much.